Good day everyone, meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody getting along? Well, as the Atlantic tropics go crickets here, with a very hostile environment, westerly wind shear and dry air, we have something here in the eastern Pacific, which could become a major problem as we go forward towards the end of the week and towards next weekend, taking a right turn towards the western Mexican resort towns near Puerto Vallarta, We'll see exactly what happens with the system. Will it affect the eastern part of the country or the Gulf of Mexico? And will crickets remain in the Atlantic? And we'll take a look at Typhoon Nasat over here, see what its effects will be on Vietnam. And if that weren't enough, we have a wintry side and a major trough we'll be dealing with across the eastern part of North America with some of the coldest air we've seen so far this season going into the fall season here will feel more like winter downwind to the Great Lakes Tuesday into Wednesday with potential for wet lake effect snow accumulations. Let's get into all the details and see what the pattern holds as we go forward. And taking a look at the Atlantic here, we're going to start off, yeah, this does look impressive. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, aren't we going to watch this system out here? We'll watch how quickly the wind shear and the dry air gets to this, especially the wind shear. Look at that. And it takes it kind of northerly as well, but look at how it's kind of getting sheared apart. And look at here, you're wondering why there's no activity over here into the western Gulf and the east coast. Look at this big old front. And this hurricane starts to potentially feel the effects from this front, but it's mainly going to be this high pressure system that's building and behind it that the periphery of this high is going to help steer that hurricane. And I'll show you that momentarily in the Eastern Pacific. But take a look at this. Yeah, we're starting to see a very hostile environment develop in the Atlantic. That doesn't mean we can't see any storms. But look at this. At least through this forecast period, the only areas I see that could be the potential when you start to get these stalled out frontal boundaries, this is how, you know, Sandy kind of came out of this whole thing in, back in 2012. You have to watch these frontal boundaries that stall across from the Bahamas to the Caribbean because, you know, some things can spin out of these systems. You know, and with the kind of blocking pattern we're in, yeah, they can kind of head up like this and cause some problems here along the East Coast. So we'll watch this. We're definitely not going to put our guard down. There's that big hurricane in the Eastern Pacific. But look at this. Yeah, that's interesting. Potentially forming into some kind of nor'easter here. This is Sunday, October 23rd. Look at that. Definitely on our nor'easter radar here. Um, sometimes these can form subtropical lows too, but for the most part it stays off the coast until you get up into parts of New Jersey, up to Cape Cod and southeastern New England. So we'll definitely watch this. We're kind of transitioning seasons here. We're bridging the gap. And look at this. We got a lot of tropical moisture. This time of year, as I said, we have to watch these kind of areas that are more persistent here in the Caribbean and parts of the Bahamas because we could see some kind of spin up and Definitely, you can get a hurricane pretty quick out of some of these spin-ups. The intertropical convergence zone, there are some waves, but it just doesn't look that great. And as we go in time, here it is. This, this is what I'm talking about here. Yeah, we have two areas. This is Tuesday, October 25th. We have an area out here, but a more impressive area here just south of Hispaniola and Jamaica. So yeah, we're going to be watching this persistent area. We'll definitely look and see if it's coming in on the Euro as well. You see uh, there is a big old front that's kind of at this point uh, becoming quite potent as it moves to the northeast. So this won't be too much of a factor in all this mess. But take a look at this. As we continue in time, it, it's just very apparent by this point, you know, we're nearing October 26th, this and this be, remains very persistent. So we'll definitely want to keep an eye on this. This is a trend we'll have to watch as we go in time. And there's the last frame. Uh, let's get into the euro here. All right, let's take a look at the euro here for the Atlantic. So essentially what you have, you have these very strong westerlies here, these troughs. This is very hostile. Yeah, there's the intertropical convergence zone, that one wave, but it literally gets blocked, cut off here. There's that area of high pressure. It's going around the periphery, and then it starts to get sheared by this massive amount of westerly and southwesterly wind shear here. And you see how it just gets sheared apart? Well, there it is. These are the areas that I wanted to really keep an eye on here as we go towards Sunday, October 23rd, the last full week of October. Take a look at this. We'll be watching these areas right around just east of the Bahamas, down and through parts of Hispaniola, any one of these disturbances this time of year definitely has to be watched very, very, very closely. And you see the persistence of these? Never let your guard down with these, especially when there's this high-pressure system just west of it. This trough is lifting out, and then you start to get a ridge. Any one of these systems could try to make a run 
up the East Coast. So we'll keep an eye on it here. So here we go for the Eastern Pacific. Take a look at this. This is our 70% area through day five. This is where the big fireworks show is going to be over the next 10 days. So as we put this into motion, we'll take a look at the euro momentarily. But this here is, my friends, is the GFS. Take a look at this. This is by, let's get our timestamp up there, Thursday, October 20th at 11 a.m. We start to see what could be a big tropical storm slash hurricane here. This is in the vicinity here of Acapulco. So here is Acapulco. Look at how close the center of circulation is going to be on this system. So take a look at this as we continue in time. Look how quickly it just explodes into a massive hurricane here. This is a perfect donut shape here. Yeah, these resort towns along the coast will be seeing tremendous amount of wave action. Would not be surprised if this obtains Category 4 or Category 5 strength. Look at this. Thankfully, for the most part, through this forecast period for Friday, there's Friday at 5 p.m., it remains offshore. But as it rounds the periphery of a upper level high here. So, you know, you have this high pressure system back across parts of the Gulf of Mexico, the southeastern part of the United States. This thing's going to start to feel the outer periphery of this high. And I'll show you this on the euro momentarily. But watch this. Watch what this system starts to do. It essentially becomes even stronger by Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. here. Take a look at this. Here's Puerto Vallarta, a uh, well-known resort town here. Very beautiful location, but look at this. This, this is how close this system is going to be by then. So we're starting to get the outer feeder bands definitely in these areas, these coastal uh, resort towns. And watch how quickly it turns to the right here. It's a hard right turn, and you always have to watch these systems when they do this because they can continue to intensify. Look at how strong this is. This is a perfectly concentric system, and now with this model run, it takes it even closer to part of our Arte here, which is dangerously close, and watch this as we go in time. We'll have to watch the trends, but the eye, the eastern eye wall could be working its way onshore into portions of just west of part of our Arte here. So definitely some tremendous damage, some storm surge. This is 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. And watch this. There is some weakening you can see going on, but by any stretch of the imagination, there's going to be tremendous surge and damaging wind and all sorts of inland flooding once this system makes landfall. Now see, it kind of dissipates. It kind of gets absorbed into the westerlies. And you see its moisture start to come in the form of the southern plains by early next Monday, October 24th. All right, so taking a look at the euro here, let's take a look, see if it shows anything similar in the eastern Pacific to the GFS. Well, we do have a hurricane out here, or a tropical storm for that matter. It doesn't look as powerful, though, as the GFS has. But look at this, it does explode it into a hurricane. This is by Sunday, October 23rd, and it kind of brings it a little bit farther to the north up the coast. Essentially brings it in as a hurricane and quickly absorbs it into the westerlies. All right, so as we take a look at the euro here, take a look at this. Let's uh, back up there. We don't going to go out that far. Here we go. So this is the trough we're going to be dealing with. This is what's going to open up our first potential lake effect of the season this week in the form of that wet snow. Look at the extremes here. This is what you get. Massive ridge in western North America. This massive blocking up here in Greenland. I'll show you the NAO index momentarily. And you get this big, old, massive trough here across the eastern part of the United States. Look how long it takes to lift out, too. As we go into Wednesday, Thursday, look at this. We still haven't gotten rid of it by Friday. And we finally get some ridging here for the weekend. You got some great opportunities for some leaf foliage peeping up here into parts of the northeast. So just really nice to get out there and watch that fall foliage turn as it gets peak in many areas. And look at that. We head into Sunday, into Monday. We get a massive ridge, but look what's forming just behind it. And does it really get in? We see more of a, this is interesting out here, well, we'll have to watch the potential for, you know, any anything tropical, subtropical, or nor'easter in nature here, just off northeast of the Bahamas here, showing up here on the Euro. And let's actually take a look at the GFS momentarily as well. So, you know, as we continue in motion, let's get the, make sure it's the latest. There we go. So look at this. Pretty similar pattern, ridging by the weekend, so it takes us four or five days to get rid of that massive amount of uh, troughiness. But look what's hanging out here off the southeast coast. That's that potential nor'easter. Let's see what happens with that. That kind of gets pushed to the northeast and absorbed. You have the high pressure here, massive high here, and this big trough. So essentially, 
We're starting to see a new weather pattern form along the U.S. East Coast, but there is kind of, oh, there it is. There is kind of a reinforcement ridge behind that. And we'll have to watch this here into the southeast. Is this a sign of some sort of system that's just going to hang out and stall here? We'll have to see. It looks like a cutoff low for that matter. All right, so let's get into your HRRR model, essentially your future radar. So, yeah, a lot of these stronger thunderstorms are going to be exiting the southeast, you know, this evening. They're off the Florida coast, getting off of Virginia Beach up into the northeast here. Some of these stronger storms will be on their way out. But look what's replacing this. This is a low-pressure system. I'll show you momentarily on the Euro as well. Look at this lake enhanced. This is going to be lake enhancement as we head through the rest of Monday night into Tuesday and even into Wednesday. Look at these bands. These are essentially lake effect bands. And look at this. We're still dealing with this system kind of backlashing parts of southeastern New England. I'll get into the rainfall amounts momentarily. You could be picking up some beneficial rains as this kind of goes horizontally from southwest to northeast here. And look at this. The southeast kind of clearing out here. That's great news. But we're going to be dealing with a problem up here in the northeast. We could see some wet snow, especially Tuesday night. Look at this. This is 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. So, yeah, some wet snow is possible into parts of western New York, western Pennsylvania, even around the Cleveland area, especially the hills just east of Cleveland, Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo. We could be looking at some snowfall here into parts of the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountains down and through West Virginia as well. So let's take a look as we continue in time. Yeah, this is quite pretty intense. You can actually see where the area of low pressure is. And look at these bands. This is lake enhancement. So you, normally with lake effect, you have, you know, you're between a low and a high. You're not, don't have the low essentially right over you. But with this, look what you have. This is enhancement. And the low is helping enhance this along with the lake effect. So you definitely have some tremendous lake effect instability here. Uh, Graupel is definitely a high capability as well. And then look at this. As we approach 11 p.m., this is midnight, 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. Look at some of these bands. I would not be surprised if some of these higher elevations above 2,000 feet could see upwards of 2 or 3 inches of slushy, wet snowfall accumulation, especially inland away from the lake as you get into northwestern Pennsylvania, these hills in southwestern upstate New York. Definitely want to watch this as these pivot towards the east. Look at this, how they start to orient in those west-northwesterly bands here. So definitely going to keep an eye on this uh, for any lake effect uh, enhancement and development. And look at that. That stays persistent into 10 a.m. Wednesday, 11 a.m. noon. And look at that. Wow. That low-pressure system still up here into parts of Ontario. It's slowly moving to the northeast, but look how it's enhancing this west and west-northwesterly flow here across the eastern Great Lakes. All right, so taking a look at the Euro here, let's take a look. As we go into motion, here is that big old, look at this, 996 millibar low. This is Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, you know, after the sun's risen. You can see these oriented bands of lake effect, and look at this big old comma-shaped, most of the severe weather by this point moving well off the coast. But look at this, behind this area of low pressure, this is getting into Tuesday night. You see this westerly and northwesterly flow. That's where we're going to see, as I showed you on the HRRR model, a lot of tremendous amount of cold air. And that will be crossing the Great Lakes with all that instability. And even into Thursday morning, we still get these bands of lake effect snow. Let's actually look into the northeast here as we look regionally. Take a look at this. We'll zoom in here. You can see the evolution of this system. So is this low... Kind of hangs out over southern Ontario here. Look at this enhancement that goes on, especially these higher elevations of western Pennsylvania. Definitely got to keep an eye on these. Some of these higher elevations could achieve advisory criteria snowfall here. You see, most of the time during the daytime hours, it's mostly rain. But it's at night, you got to watch this, you know, heading on into Tuesday night, Wednesday night early Thursday morning, and then the flow becomes a little bit more southwesterly here, so it turns the flow, most of these bands, lifting north towards uh, northern suburbs of Buffalo and Watertown, but they become a little bit warmer, so it's more in the form of rainfall. All right, so if we take a look at total precipitation amounts, you can see it's mainly going to be fine, defined across a couple areas through this weekend. You can see the northeast. Oh, there's something into the northwest coming in for next weekend and southern Texas, and south Florida here. So let's head our way up to the northeast here. You can essentially see, as we go through time here, Monday, Tuesday, into Wednesday, 
most of this back to the east. Actually, let's just back that up a little bit. We'll just go through this weekend. You can see Euro is keeping a pretty good half to three quarters of an inch here across eastern New England with higher amounts in eastern Maine here. So take a look at that and look at this here off of Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. These are those lake effect bands that will be kicking in. So actually, let's take a look at the HRRR model here. We'll see exactly what is going to happen with this as far as precipitation amounts. So it's a, it's a similar picture here. There's pretty good agreement. If you're kind of stuck in this hole but in between the Susquehanna Valley, you kind of luck out here. But if you're downwind of especially Lake Erie, this is where I think this is going to be your storm. And look at this. As this front's trying to exit here Monday night into Tuesday morning, you're still going to pick up a three quarters of an inch on average with up to two to three inches up there in parts of eastern Maine. All right, so here's the NEO index. We are very negative right now, almost to negative two, but we will be pulling up towards potentially slightly negative to neutral. Uh, but we'll see how long that lasts. You know, this has been a, uh, this is our big major drop here at the start of the season, bringing us that colder air. All right, so from this past Thursday, look at these beautiful photos sent in by Jim here. This is uh, Fisher's Island, New York State, stormy weather. On the way, you can see, look at that, white cap waves, and look it off in that distance. That's a quite an overcast sky with some dark clouds rolling in. Nice captures there, and let's take a look at the next shot. Yeah, look at this. Stormy seas to be had out here. Take a look at that. You can see the overcast sky and stormy conditions, and let's continue going through these here. And Jim showing us the following day, October 14th. Look at these beautiful photos. Yeah, this is some nice weather out here. You can see the clouds starting to break up, and as that front moved away, Look at that sun. Look at that. That's beautiful. The sun's showing through these very thin, wispy clouds. Just very beautiful scene here. Nice day to get out there, it looks like, and enjoy things. And look at that. As the sky's cleared, you get that nice blue sky coming in. Nice mid-fall day across the region. Nice captures there, Jim. And take a look at John here back on October 15th over this past weekend. Huddersfield Soccer Football Stadium, UK. Look at that. Nice day to get out there and enjoy a cloudless, beautiful sky. Look at that nice green grass. Nice capture there, John. Looks like a good time. All right, so if we take a look at temperature trends here, let's take a look at your Tuesday. Yeah, this is where the trough's hanging out, those 40s especially north of that line. Watch how as we blossom towards Wednesday. Those 40s start to pivot towards the northeast here. You're still holding on to 55 to 60 along the U.S. East Coast. The west is actually pretty toasty all the way up into Washington State into the 70s. But look at this across the northeast. We're stuck in the upper 40s and lower 50s. And then by Friday, October 21st here, we start to push this big old batch of warmth towards the northeast. Watch what happens as we head into the weekend. It's almost like an Indian summer here across the Northeast. Look at that. And we trade places here as the West gets that troughiness that I showed you in that upper level pattern. And look at this. This is by Sunday. Highs will be approaching the mid to upper 60s across most of the Northeast. Extended outlook for Mountain Town viewers, Bingham to Descranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look at this. We are dealing with frosty starts Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Wednesday will be the coldest day, blusterier and colder behind that cold front. But look at this. High pressure builds in for you Thursday, Friday, and into Saturday towards the weekend. And we warm it up towards the mid to upper 60s. Get out there and enjoy that fall foliage that is nearing peak. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, Hurricane Northeastern, also at Susquehanna Weather for my localized weather in Northeast Pennsylvania and the southern tier of New York. And don't forget MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget to question or comment down below. Let's keep our weather conversation going as well as smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe.